Hi, this is Chuck Benedict, mentor for Team 997 Spartan Robotics in Corvallis, Oregon. I uh, am actually back in Corvallis after a weekend with some relatives in Washington, so it's nice to be home. I uh, got some videos recorded while I was there, and I uh, thought I would record the final one. This is actually the, the video where we actually show whether the testing that we did, the automated testing, bore fruit because I, uh, I have a RoboRio that we used from a prior season where uh, we've blown out some ports on it, uh, digital IO ports, because, uh, you know, metal shavings work, worked their way into the uh, pins of the RoboRio and try as we might to keep those out, um, you know, it happens. So uh, lesson to you, keep tape on the thing if it's on the robot while you're doing work. Um, however, ours uh, works well enough, at least for me, to plug stuff into the I2C port and start it up. So that's what we're going to do in this video to demonstrate that the uh, I2C color sensor uh, that we've coded a device driver for uh, actually works in a, in a robot program. So uh, first thing I thought I would do is um, try to take the camera. And in fact, I'll do that now. I, I usually hate doing this because I don't like jumping a camera around and I'm no good at pointing and my preview window is gone. So this is going to be hit or miss. But I thought I would show you anyway that I actually have the camera sensor hooked up to uh, Robo Rio and so forth. So I'm going to take the camera and we're going to go on a trip here uh, if I can get my cord from being stuck. So here you see I have a uh, camera, the uh, color sensor. Uh, hooked up through a rat's nest of jumper wires to my RoboRio, uh, and the RoboRio is uh, connected to this uh, this bench power supply uh, plugged into my workstation, and hopefully all this stuff is going to work simultaneously as I record this. So here we are back. Hopefully I'm recentered, and let me get this cord off my screen. Okay, I'm back. So uh, first thing that we're going to do is go look at some code, very simple code. Um, I took the example subsystem. So this, this project was created using uh, the WPI lib plugin for VS Code. Uh, I picked one of the template projects. I renamed the subsystem to ball sorter because, uh, from as you recall from prior videos, we're experimenting with color sensors and vision for a ball sensor subsystem that we're using for a preseason competition that's going to happen later in December. Uh, we're sorting racquetballs. So um, I renamed the subsystem ball sorter. I stuck in the uh, a variable for our color sensor. Uh, this is the TSC34725 that I built a device driver uh, against. And uh, created a create method, a static create method that actually creates a new ball sorter uh, plugged into the onboard port of the RoboRio, which is the little four pin port uh, on top that I, that I just showed you. And I defaulted an integration time of 145 milliseconds and a gain of 16. These are actually pretty high settings, especially if you get your um, image close to the color sensor. Um, these are going to result in quantities upward of 30 or 40 or 50,000. It may even overload the sensor uh, if, if uh, you know you're if you're close enough. Uh, so it's interesting to experiment with these to see what range you get your values into um, because that's obviously going to affect uh, you know how you deal with those values in your program. But they work well enough for now. Uh, next thing is in my uh, robot program, uh, I created a static uh, ball sorter. And in my uh, example command, I put a requirement in here. I'm not even sure I'm required to do this at this point because I'm not even calling commands. But I wanted to make sure that the, uh, the runner that puts the values on the in network tables actually does its thing. And I, you know, I'm, I, uh, I leave my team to, 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 to do all this robot programming, so I'm not sure whether it's required, but anyway, I stuck it in there. Um, so that's that. Um, so really, that's, that's it. I declared it. I instantiate it uh, in the robot program, and I basically just 
deployed code on the RoboRio. And when I did that, um, so here's the driver station, here's um, the default dashboard, and uh, we use the other smart dashboard typically, uh, and we, we do that through, or have done that um, when we've been using Eclipse. And I noticed when um, we installed the, um, the plugin for VS Code that that didn't seem to drag down the uh, old Java-based smart dashboard, and I, I was trying to figure out why, and I read that uh, that uh, smart dashboard is not installed with the VS Code plugin. At least that's the, what it seems to me. And there is a manual way to go about doing it. I haven't figured out how to do it yet, um, but you know, I'll share that knowledge for what it's worth. Um, so you can see here that I've got, uh, and I'm sorry I can't blow this up because I don't think the smart dashboard gives me the ability to blow these up, but you can see the numbers flipping. So I have a red racquetball here and off camera, because um, you may have noticed when I showed you I had a broken lead. Um, those These little leads are fragile, so I'm going to try not to move things around. I got my racquetball. Uh, going to, you know, so you see the red sensor hanging around at uh, 7,600. I put the red racquetball over and I get, you know, close to 20,000 on the red sensor. And the, the blue and the green are hovering around 6,000. So that's a pretty good test. Here's my red or my blue racquetball. Um, blue racquetball is hanging out at uh, 12,000 and green is, is hanging around at 11 and red at 7. So, you know, decent test. I, you know, my color sensor is working now. You're asking yourself, did I just plug this in and it start working? I cannot tell a lie. The answer is yes. I plugged it in and it started working. And that is because I put decent enough tests in my, um, uh, my uh, driver program. And, you know, all the work with the bus pirate, if you've watched the prior videos, paid more fruit because I was able to test it completely on the bench and not have to have the RoboRio around. In fact, at the time I didn't have the RoboRio here. I had it other places. I had to go grab it to do this test. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have an extra one. I don't know how many teams have extras. Um, if you do, good for you. I pretty much guarantee you, though, that every programmer on your team does not have access to a RoboRio laying around that they can put on a bench and plug into their workstation. So that's why the Bus Pirate is incredibly useful. Uh, in doing this. Um, okay, I fibbed. Wasn't quite plug it in and it worked. There was one minor detail that I will show you, but it actually is not related to code in the project. Uh, it's related to the build system. Um, in So in build.gradle, uh, and actually within build.gradle, not for the robot program, but for the color sensor uh, device driver program. And let me see, let me go open that up. Uh, here we go. Build.gradle. Let me show you one little detail I had to change. So um, in the uh, build.gradle for the color sensor, I'm referencing the Gradle Rio plugin, because you have to have that for some JNI stuff. And you also have to reference the version. Otherwise, when you build this by itself, you get a complaint that you didn't specify the version. Problem is, is the way I have this rigged up and the, the build instructions for the robot program are, uh, I, I, I talk about how you actually have to set it, set these two projects up to make them work because I do not have the device driver in on uh, the Maven, the main Maven repository site, which I do intend to do, but I, I at this point, I don't. So these projects live side by side in one directory. And the uh, build Gradle uh, for the robot program makes a reference here to the device driver as one of its dependencies on a project basis. Well, when you do that, if you have Gradle Rio referenced in both projects and you reference the version in both, doesn't work. The build fails and it says, hey, I, you, I already have a Gradle Rio with version blah, blah, blah. You're trying to specify another version. That's not right. That doesn't work. So what you have to do, uh, and you see I have my comments here, to make this build, you have to specify Gradle Rio uh, like that without a version in the uh, device driver. And when you do that, then it all builds fine. So 
wasn't totally true, but in terms of the code uh, in the uh, device driver, it worked perfectly with the RoboRio right out of the gate. No changes required, no bugs. So lesson, find ways to test your code without a robot. Pays huge dividends. Um, you look like a genius to the rest of your team members when you plug the thing in the first time and it just works. Uh, and it saves a whole lot of ha hassle and headache as you get closer and closer and closer to you know having to put the robot on the field and take it to, com to, to competition. Uh, so I'm going to keep it short. Uh, I, I, have, I have one more thing that I am going to say. Um, and I'm going to produce some more videos about this too because it drives me absolutely insane. Um, you know, every example program that I see, robot program, uh, I see done this way, where you put your subsystems up at the top, you declare them as statics, you instantiate them, um, and, and then you go on. Well, when you do stuff like that, and, you know, this is, this is a bit of a shame on first, um, it makes it so that your program is not easily testable. Uh, and maybe it's just because automated testing has not been a thing until recently, and, you know, first has got a lot of history. And so I, you know, whatever, it is what it is. But I'm going to um, uh, make some videos uh, in the future here to really show how to, how to change this stuff up to where it's, it's testable. And, you know, my team is just as guilty. They, they, uh, they just don't, it hasn't been stressed that automated testing and, you know, unit testing and so forth should be a thing. Uh, you should write your code with that in mind so that you can do things like this um, without having to have your robot. So there are ways to do it. I'm going to go in and show you in a future video, but uh, I, I wanted you to know that uh, I, I don't, I wrote code like this just so I could show the sensor working, but I don't think this is best practice. I don't like the way this is done and I, I, I tend to show um, a better way. But in any case, enough of my rant. Um, the good news is the color sensor works. The testing work that I did um, shows that it's, it's valuable. So I hope you can take advantage of that in future projects. And with that, I will sign off. Thanks for watching.